YouTube now. So one more minute, uh, Vivek, ma'am, with your uh, with your permission, I'll I'll start in a minute's time. So it's very warm here today, Vivek. Is it uh, Chandigarh is also warm today? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty hot. Yeah, In fact, for the first time, we had a family a, a gathering today at lunch. That's why I just came back. Uh, in my mother-in-law's house, because uh, Nina's sister, my wife is also Nina, Nina Ji. Oh, <laughs> name uh, her, sister, her sister's birthday today. So we went for lunch. Okay. So you're allowed to now travel outside home in Chandigarh? Yeah, yeah. in Panchkula, yeah. we can go to other houses. Yeah. In Chandigarh also, I believe you can within the sector. I'm not sure okay. after seven o'clock you can't. Yeah. So there are five odd teachers who joined on Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, I think let's wait for a, another 30 seconds. Uh, I think they'll be joining on Zoom. Uh, Shikha, or they're joining on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Shikha, if you can advise Zoom. us. Zoom. Okay. So Zoom we should just wait for another minute or so. I think. I'll just send a message in the meantime. Yeah. I, on the group, I'll just send a message. So. So you might want to circulate, uh, uh, send the YouTube link also, Shikha, to ma'am, so that she can she can circulate that to uh, the teachers. Right? Sometimes Zoom gives a problem, Nina, ma'am. Yeah. So yesterday we could wear sweaters, Vivek, and today suddenly it's it's got a bit warm. I think it's it's in the it's in the mid twenties now. Well, that's very pleasant for Chandigarhians, but for us, it's hot. Yeah, it's it's probably uh, mid thirties here now. Right. Twelve participants now. We'll uh, let's give ourselves another 20 seconds and we'll start, man. So others yeah. can then join us. Mm. So, can I start with your permission, Vivek uh, Nina, ma'am? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, good afternoon, teachers. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Ideas That Matter. Welcome to the series of webinars organized by Shulini University, Kasali Hill, Solon. My name is Atul Khosla, and I'm the founder and pro vice chancellor of Shulini University. Quick background I'm a BTEC from ID Kanpur, an MBA, and then spent around 20 years in the industry, uh, seven different countries, uh, 35 different cities, and lots of multinationals in between. Uh, one of the famous ones is McKinsey and Company, where I was a partner before I got into teaching. So seven years back, uh, I decided that uh, I can't make rich people richer anymore, and I decided to be a teacher. I'm very proud to say that uh, I'm a teacher. I love teaching, and I love talking. So what I'm doing right now is something I truly, truly love. Uh, welcome, Vivek, uh, on, this, uh, on this webinar. Uh, I think very similar story. So Vivek, uh, is one of the very few IS officers I know who decided to resign and become a motivational speaker. Yes. He's, I think, also on the board of your school. He is. Uh, yes. And uh, the pioneer to make uh, the IT Park. Uh, a wonderful human being, Vivek, and an electric speaker. So, uh, Vivek, thank you very much for this. Absolutely. Uh, you'll be hosting the session today. Uh, Nina, ma'am, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, at Shulani, it's our passion to our connect students and teachers. And in a small little way, we're trying to inspire people around. Yeah. So the whole idea behind this discussion today is to uh, leave some inspiration behind with your teachers so that they can go back and inspire your students. I think with that introduction, I'll request Nina Ma'am, you to uh, speak to your teachers for uh, a little bit of time, introduce the concept, and then we'll hand it over to Vivek for his very special talk. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And it's a pleasure for me to introduce 
today's speaker, Mr. Ratul Khosla and Mr. Vivek Atre on this platform. I know you people know Atre sir more than me because you people have had lot many interactions with him. For me, it is just the first time that I'm going to attend his session like this. So today's topic, uh, which is going to be touched up is retaining the human element in the era of AI. We'd love to hear from you, sir. And uh, I can see a few more people are joining. For those who, are, who have just joined us, I would like to welcome all of you. So, sir, you can go ahead. Thank you so much. Over to you, Vivek. Thank and you. I'll come in as, as and when you request me to join. Absolutely. Thank you, Atul, and thank you, Nina, ma'am. Uh, very nice to be here uh, speaking on behalf of Shulini University today, uh, because Shulini University is close to my heart. I've been uh, associated as visiting professor and advisor with Shulini University for the last couple of years, and uh, it's a great feeling to go there. The campus is absolutely glorious and beautiful. I'm sure Atul will ask me at the end, which is my favorite university, and my answer will be Shulini University. Uh, but let me also say that today is a special webinar because I'm speaking to Gurukul Global School uh, teachers and uh, they know me. Uh, most of you would have heard me in the school when I came. I have been at least six or seven times for special sessions with your students and also at least twice maybe with the teachers. So it's been a wonderful uh, uh, engagement with your school and I'm also an advisor with the school as a board of advisory advisory board member, let's say. So it's very nice to be uh, connected this way. And uh, it's a synergy, Sholini University and uh, Gurukul Global School could also have a synergy, uh, which will be great for the long-term future of both institutions. Uh, it's wonderful to see that uh, Nina Ma'am has taken over and uh, is uh, doing uh, her bit to make sure that people are connected and involved and engaged and busy. And I'm sure the teachers are finding it uh, different to be connected like this. And we also find it different. But as Atul Khosla said, uh, it is the ideal opportunity for us to share, to exchange, to speak to each other. And uh, these are times which are different, but they will not last and uh, times keep changing. So the only constant is change. And luckily today's topic is different from the topics that I've covered with you in your school. So you'll have uh, nothing of repetition, hopefully, and it will be fresh topics for you to listen to. All the teachers who have joined, I thank you and welcome you. So let's talk about artificial intelligence uh, and human creativity and the human experience and the human element. So uh, when we are in an era of artificial intelligence, then so many things are uh, now uh, involving technology. Even this session is through technology. Atul Khosla is sitting in Shulini University, Solan. Most of you are in Panchkula, Chandigarh. I am in Panchkula. And some of you may even be outside Chandigarh or Panchkula. But it is basically immaterial wherever we are. We are connected through this telephone or computer and device and technology. So artificial intelligence is helpful. There are so many things that it is helping us in. There are uh, mobile phones and smartphones, which we don't need to talk about too much. We already discussed them so many times in the school as well as on these webinars. But these uh, smartphones are also part of artificial intelligence. And uh, driver-less cars are uh, the future, I guess. They have also started in many cities in the world. I have read uh, yesterday that uh, Swedish uh, and Finnish and uh, I think Norwegian governments are encouraging their truck drivers to be sitting in their chairs at home and uh, driving remotely their trucks. Instead of going in the trucks, they are sitting uh, at home with a simulator or whatever technology they have to change the uh, speed of the truck or whatever. They have a video and they are driving from the home. And the truck is going from point A to point B, maybe 500 kilometers away, whatever it is. These are small countries, but whatever. The other point is that um, yeah, artificial intelligence has also brought in a lot of progress in terms of um, factories, industry, production. Uh, it has also brought in a lot of uh, technology into the travel industry, aircraft management, airport management. It has also brought in a lot of uh, technology into uh, processes in schools, in hospitals, in institutions, in government. I have been in government. I've seen government changing from 
the year 2000 when I came to Chandigarh administration till today when everything is seamless online. Even today, there may be some things which are not, but lots of things are. So a lot of things have changed in our lives and I don't like to scare people, but I do tell them that perhaps in 10 years or maybe even seven or eight years, you may actually have a chip in your wrist, which means that a wrist will be full of, uh, there will be an integrated circuit inside your wrist. And you may have uh, something which is your smartphone is part of your body. And you will only have to speak into that phone to say the command or the video will also play on your wrist. So you never know. So this is something which is uh, going to not stop. And technology is not going to stop. Technology is something which is here to stay and it will only progress. But as Atul was saying yesterday in another webinar, uh, technology has always been progressing and mankind has always made some progress. So uh, over the centuries, there have been discoveries and inventions. And uh, if we talk about the coming of computers, when computers came, then it was said that mankind will lose their jobs. People will lose jobs because computers have come. It didn't happen. There are factories which are almost totally automated today with only, let's say, six people working over there instead of 600 people who used to be, or could have been working there earlier. But those automations do not create uh, joblessness. They have created modifications. So as I said, the truck driver is not jobless. The truck driver is sitting at home driving his truck instead of sitting in the truck. So ways of working may change and ways of teaching may change and ways of treating human beings and healthcare systems may also change. They have changed. You may have heard of an IBM software, which is actually carrying out surgeries from uh, America to India, India to Thailand or Europe or wherever. So there are uh, basically things happening where artificial intelligence is enabling humankind to do things better. Of course, it has still not stopped this virus and the virus is seeping into our lives, has come into our world. And uh, luckily, India has been rather better off than many, many countries. But artificial intelligence has not been able to stop the virus. And it is only medical research which will one day hopefully lead to not only treatment, but vaccination. And that will be a solid defense against this virus. So these are things which change, uh, things evolve. Uh, but human experiences don't change. I mean, they do change, but they are important. So if two people were sitting by a culvert on the roadside, let us say 30 years ago, it is most likely that 30 years ago, these two people would be undisturbed from let's say 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They could sit and talk. Nothing would disturb them. And two people, these could be an old man uh, with his friend. Maybe they are 70 year old, both of them and they're sitting together and talking and talking and talking, nobody disturbing them. It could be a boy and a girl run away from college and they have gone and sat by the roadside and they are talking and talking and nobody disturbing them. Maybe the local villagers will come and object, but that's all. No telephone, no nothing, and no technology. Now technology comes into play when we need it and that is what it should be. So technology should be a facilitator it should help us, it should be an enabler, but it should not be the boss. It should not be the director of all things that happen. The director is God and God has to do his bit. We as actors on this planet in this life have to do our bit. Technology has to be our aid, comfort and enabler. How are we to manage technology in a way that technology and human experiences go side by side and the best of technology is used by us for our lives improvement and facilitating uh, let's say video conversations between an old couple and their grandchildren living in Canada and uh, facilitating various things which could not have been possible without technology but not allowing technology to take away the joy and the sheer happiness from little things like cycling somewhere, walking into the fields, or talking and talking and talking, gupshap type of thing, without staring at our face. That is the balance and tightrope work which human beings have to make. And uh, unfortunately, there are trends where artificial intelligence has 
obsessed on it. And uh, we had that WhatsApp joke where, before lockdown, of course, where a boy calls up his friend and says, so let's meet at eight o'clock along with the two other friends. All of us will sit down together and stare at our phones. So this is the kind of uh, social life that has become uh, the norm. Uh, when people get together, they stare at their phones instead of talking to each other. And I often give an example that if you are a person who's work at your workplace and the person who is sitting next to you is uh, not feeling well, not himself, not herself, but you are not noticing because you are so much into absorbed into your software and your email and your uh, uh, Zoom connection and whatever it is, that you're not even able to understand that a human being needs your concern and help, is feeling low today, is uh, maybe has a fever, but you are not uh, really looking here and there, you are not even concerned. So if we become so automated in our thinking, in our lives, in the way we are, in the way we conduct ourselves, then we are uh, unfortunately going to become less of human beings and more of automatons ourselves. When the chip is implanted in our body, we will be semi-automated anyway. But can we retain the human element? Can we retain the finer elements of life like love and caring and sharing and empathy and concern and uh, communication skills with expressions, with smiles, with uh, tears, with other ways of human expression and emotion. Emotions are luckily something which are still out of bounds for computers. And luckily, robots cannot really feel for others. Although there was a movie, uh, I wonder if you have seen it or heard of it. I don't remember the name right now. Atul Khosla might have seen it. Where a man falls in love with the voice in his computer. And there's a girl's image and he falls in love with her. And he wants to marry her. And a Japanese man actually petitioned the government in uh, Japan that he wants to marry his robot, his female robot. So these are times which are strange and we need to balance between technology and human lives and human experience. So I'll pass on to Atul for showing us a beautiful video of Aman and also sharing his thoughts on this topic of artificial intelligence and human creativity. Atul. Thank you, Vivek. Uh, what beautiful... Uh examples that you brought in. I guess I've seen the movie, by the way. I can't remember the name of the movie, but uh, uh, I, I'll send the name to all of you once I think I, I can figure it out. I have two points to make before I play this video. Uh, the first is the importance of human touch. So I, as an example, spent five years in Switzerland, Zurich, Vivek, and there are lots and lots of uh, beauty parlors and masseur parlors there. Uh, pretty much every fourth shop in Switzerland belongs to something related to beauty. And I was quite surprised and I asked one of my friends who's Swiss, why? And she answered very interestingly saying, most old people in Switzerland live alone. They either divorced and the, and the children don't uh, stay with them. So they haven't touched another human being for days and the need for that human touch is so intense that they actually go to either a masseur or to a beauty parlor just to get that touch. Now that might sound quite amazing to people like us in India, but it's happening just a few thousand miles away. Uh, so I think uh, however much artificial intelligence comes in, it'll be very, very critical for all of us to make sure that we retain our Indian values, the Indianness. And you speak a lot about meditation, Vivek, you speak a lot about uh, spirituality. So I think we need to adopt technology while retaining the Indianness of uh, all of us. Uh, whether we call it Bharat or India, that doesn't matter. It's just what's in the name. But uh, maintaining the families and the culture and the values we had will be very, very important. So I think that's the first point I'd like to make. I think the second point I'd just like to extend, Vivek, is when you spoke about this example I gave about how technology has been hitting human beings, not now, but for the last 10,000 years. Uh, and that's true. Uh, imagine what we're talking about AI, uh, probably, you know, the cavemen would have been talking about the same thing when fire came in, you know, they would have been saying, you know, how we don't lose the touch of uh, hunting together because now we have fire and we've got tools and we don't need to run after animals the way we did in the past. 
then the wheel came and then metals came and then the industrial revolution happened, print came. So it's an evolution that human beings, beings have. And uh, it's, a, it's a, fact, a matter of fact that technology will keep coming in. So I think the onus will be all, on all of us as teachers very specifically that we impart these values to our, to our students. Uh, one more area that I'd like to bring about Vivek, which is linked to the video I'm going to show, is the whole aspect of creativity. However much AI comes in, it can't take, the, uh, uh, take away the ability to create things. So there's a wonderful book called Homo Sapiens, which I would encourage all your teachers to read. So uh, the author talks about why did Homo Sapiens survive? And, and uh, why did other species die? So when Homo sapiens came on earth, there were 35 other human species. The Nidardal man was actually larger, bigger, and had more brain than the Homo sapiens. But over time, the Homo sapiens took over and all other species died. And the only reason why the Homo sapiens were able to survive Vivek, as he argues, was because the ability of humans, homo sapiens to create things. So what did we create? We created new laws. So we said, this is a country. God did not create countries, we did. Homo sapiens created laws. God did not say that we should have a law X, Y, Z. It was we who created, we created religion. We created uh, marriage or other institutions. So what happens when you create these things? Your human beings are one of the very few animals with because of their ability to dream and create, they can get large number of peoples together. So the Nidardal man or the gorilla or the chimpanzees cannot have more than 20 people in a herd. Beyond 20, the herd breaks Vivek. While human beings can have, India has one point, what, 130 crore people all binded together with a certain set of values. And I think that's what creativity does. And that's the story of what I wanted to share over here. What we are trying to build in at Shulani is how do we bring creativity into our students, inspiration into our students. And I'll take an example of Aman over here. Uh, Aman uh, comes from a small town of Punjab near Hoshiarpur. Uh, she comes from a relatively lesser privileged family. I think her father is a carpenter. Was a tough student to deal with in her undergrad and masters. And some magic happened when she went for a PhD. And that magic actually happened because she somewhere got inspired by her guide. She got she collaborated with people across the world, and we gave her the freedom to start dreaming and thinking. So Aman and her team have discovered a molecule which, when added to water, kills 99% bacteria in that water, making, making it drinkable, making it portable, which basically means that Aman's invention can change the way we drink water going forward. It's a very, very big invention, a very big discovery. Aman has won amazing awards, including a UN award as a uh, young water fellow. She spent four months in Geneva as part of that. She's won a 25 lakh award from Tata Trust, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of this could have happened or has happened because of this whole small seed called creativity, Vivek. And that's what I'm going to leave as a message for all of you as teachers that try to seed the, the thought of creativity in your students. Uh, yes, exam results are great. Yes, they need to get into IIT and NEET and other places, but students who believe that they can create new things are the ones who will actually become the Modi's of the world. And I'm going to, with this, play the video of Aman. Hopefully you'll get goose pimples like I do every time I watch this. So am I allowed, Vivek, to share the screen? Please go ahead.
So very simple idea, Vivek. Moringa is nothing but drumsticks. But it's the creativity of the idea. It's stretching one's imagination to come up with new solutions. So teachers, if there's one thought I'd like to leave with you, that is creativity. And how do you get creativity? I think there are three things that uh, make people creative. It's inspiration. It's fearlessness. So put your students in an environment where they can take risks. And finally, it's about you know stretching the people uh, and make them think outside the box. I think with that, I'll again I request Vivek to continue and I'll come a little towards the end. Over to you, Vivek. Thank you. Thank you, Atul. Well said, very well spoken and great examples and uh, great thoughts. And uh, the example of Aman is an example of creativity where Aman, a student of Shulani and a professor, have managed to create a brilliant uh, experiment which has worked so well, water purification through Moringa Sea. So if we talk of creativity now, because uh, we've already talked of why and how artificial intelligence is going to be a part of our lives, but we need to retain the human element. We will also talk of the classroom and what you're having to do nowadays, online uh, teaching. But creativity is something which needs to be injected into the school curriculum. I know that your school is doing a lot in that respect. And you have really taken uh, steps to make sure that the children are creative, they speak on stage. I know many of them speak very well, I've heard them. And they are good orators. They have great ideas, they're confident. And I've met you teachers also, I can see from your uh, demeanor when I'm in the class that you are interested in learning and in interacting. Right now I can't see you, but I know you are there. So it is absolutely wonderful that the school is already emphasizing creativity. And Shulini is an institution which basically is research oriented. And Atul didn't mention in this webinar, but we must congratulate Shulini University for becoming the highest patent filer in India among all institutions, which is a fantastic achievement only for a university which is only 10 years old. And IIT is included. Everybody is on the back burner and Shulini is in the forefront. So uh, creative people are a little more happy. Creative people are a little more cheerful, a little more electrified and inspired. Uh, if I am a numbers person, there is no harm in being creative with the numbers. Uh, I can be creative with numbers. Of course, Shakuntala Devi, I know the renowned mathematician. I believe a movie has been made on her life and Vidya Balan is playing the role over there. But the point is that numbers and creativity can also go together. Even a boring, dull job, a clerical job of paperwork can be creative. If we somehow bring in ideas which make that work a little more absorbing, more efficient, and teaching is certainly a creative job already. There are so many ways in which you can make your classroom atmosphere creative. And speaking of classroom atmosphere, let me assure all of you, and I've been speaking to various audiences. I've also spoken, uh, I think, 25 schools we've already done through this webinar series. And I've also spoken to doctors and healthcare professionals throughout uh, 15 to 20 countries through the Government of India Initiative on Motivational Speaking, which I did. Uh, I have told them, don't worry about this uh, virus too much. It will be over. And you will go back to classrooms. You, teachers, will go back to being what you were earlier. But change is only constant. There will be differences. While going back, there will be differences. It's OK. We accept them. We adapt to them. We move on. Online classes are also, in a way, unique. I know many teachers are feeling the burden. I know many schools where teachers are saying that this is very difficult. You know, the parents also sit down with the children. They also listen to the lectures. And teacher-student uh, relationship has now intruders like parents over there, uh, which is difficult. And the children are at home. So they are not as disciplined or not as uh, careful in their class, attentive as they should be. So perhaps things are different. How can you make your own lecture, whether in the classroom or online, more absorbing, more engaging, more creative, so that the person at the other end the student at the other end uh, is more attentive. Maybe you can make it interactive. For example, in this lecture series, we have a video by Atul after 10 minutes. 
and then after another 10 15 minutes he comes in the monotony is broken if i speak for 35 minutes it's okay but i may not be able to hold the attention as much as if a video comes in for 2 minutes if something else comes in atul comes and shares it there is variety so in your class you should also bring in not another person but some games some interactions some ways of two way communication which will make the children a little more receptive attentive and uh, regular in their attention spans so try and do that that is also creativity also taking them out to nature whenever you can i know you have a beautiful garden and uh, lawns in the school but whenever you can once the lockdown is over make them spend time outdoors your school is anyway known as gurukul so when it is known as gurukul then go back to the gurukul days and uh, in the winters especially or when the weather is more pleasant spend some classroom time outdoors outdoors they are sitting in the grass the teacher is sitting in the grass or just on a chair and spending time maybe biology lesson maybe something else zoology whatever it is just doing whatever is necessary outdoors you can see in the backdrop of all three of us i can see three people i could see atul with a plant at the back i can see neena ma'am's picture with lots of plants at the, behind her and you can see a plant over here behind me uh, which is also moving the leaves are moving because of the fan a breeze so uh, nature has to somehow be part of our presence of our experience the birds are chirping louder nowadays you can hear them the skies are clearer the, the air is purer the the whole environment is more beautiful than before so go back to nature and try and cut yourself off from artificial intelligence more try and distance yourself from your whatsapp a little more try and distance yourself from social media a little more whatever free time human beings have they turn to their phone so can we discipline ourselves that i have another 10 minutes to go before my class i have finished my work i am free can i just be mindful of this moment take pleasure in maybe just sipping this cup of tea which i'm having i hope uh, some of you are having a cup of tea at this time and just you know uh, absorbing yourself in that moment despite the pressure of time you can take out these little pocket breaks 5 minute uh, pocket sized breaks which will make you refresh and atul mentioned meditation i have mentioned it to you many times in your school i think we have also done a demo meditation at times uh, meditation morning evening even after coming back from school after lunch maybe just sit down for 5 minutes and uh, pray meditate whatever you like prayers and meditation have powerful vibration and these powerful vibrations are not understood by mankind today in 2020 artificial intelligence has progressed but intelligence of mankind has still not been able to understand intuitive matters intuition related matters so intuition comes from meditation when you go deep within your intuition will improve i can share with you that after meditating for years not only do i feel calmer and more relaxed more able to take on challenges of life but my uh, memory has also improved let me tell you i can uh, remember 10 digit mobile numbers quite easily now especially after taking voluntary retirement <laughs> I, i find it very easy i can repeat the number i can read it once and then type it into wherever i have to sometimes uh, i am able to uh, guess the age of somebody to the right digit somebody comes is as i guess my age i'll say maybe 56 he'll say how did you know exactly 56 so intuition i'm not saying that this is some magic it is just that your mind becomes uncluttered decluttered and decluttering your mind of the effects of technology and happenings of the world is vital meditation will give you that calmness which will enable you to think clearly and thinking clearly is so important as you know you will be more efficient in your work you will take the right decision with your children with your spouse with your husband with your wife whatever you do you will be able to do and say the right things you will be able to calculate in a better way whatever decision making is to be done you will be able to take decisions which are based on your intuitive perceptions rather than only on the information which is on the table 
So your intuitive perception, this is a slightly higher topic for a school webinar. And I'm not the speaker who can really talk in detail on intuitive perception. But I'm going to encourage you to log in one day to Shulini's uh, series of Guru uh, Yogananda series of webinars. And perhaps uh, Atul's team will send a special link to Nina Man to share with the teachers. There is a guided meditation session planned for next week. I think it's on Tuesday. And uh, there we, we will actually be joining a Swamiji who will speak on uh, meditation and how to meditate. And he will lead us through a meditation. You will find that your intuition, your intelligence, your emotional intelligence, which we have talked about many times, will improve. So try and focus on yourself. Try and focus on your heart element, your soul element, and not only on your body element, which is basically physical fitness is great, very important. And stressing yourself out on the sports field or physically will help you to de-stress your mind. But body, mind, and soul all have to be developed together. Being creative, the creative principle in a human being leads to a higher kind of life. It, le it leads to a life which is more worth living rather than just having a career where you got a job, earned money, uh, bought a car and uh, paid the uh, whatever fees. And then uh, after a few years, you did this, that and retired and then one day off. So maybe we need to not only go through the motion, we need to create something which is different, leave a mark on this planet, in this world. And you, in your case, are the best uh, uh, manufacturers of hum uh, student personalities. You are creating human beings of excellence. And if you can create those human beings with your own example, then there's nothing like that. Now I'm sounding like a speech giver, and uh, this is more of a webinar. So nice to talk to you. And I'm uh, handing it over to Atul. And uh, Atul uh, will also show you a remarkable uh, video of Shulni University and uh, share his thoughts. At the end, I'll urge you all to ask questions. You can start preparing your questions now. And the Q&A box and chat box are there for that. Atul. Thank you, Vivek. I think, uh, again, so well structured in terms of your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, one or two things which I'd like to speak before I get into, uh, into the video. I think it's... Uh, it's about, the first is about hobbies. Unfortunately in India, uh, especially when students get into the 11th and 12th, or even possibly nowadays in the 9th and the 10th, we increasingly as parents and sometimes as teachers discourage them to take up hobbies. Uh, I think there's so much pressure on IIT, NEET and JE and whatever, that we forget that the most successful people in this world all have great hobbies, all are followers of something very special. And that's true for all of you. You know, there's something special in all of you. Some of you might be great painters. Some of you might be cooking very well. Some of you might be singing very well. Some of you might be great, you know, guitar players, a tabla player, something special. I can almost guarantee all of you have. So I will encourage you a to, you know, this is the time for you, you're sitting at home, uh, to you know, just just practice your hobby, bring it back. Uh, it's a beautiful movie. I think uh, uh, Rockstar or uh, I forgot the name. Uh, you know, they uh, they thought about you know bringing hobbies back. This guy was a great musician, and he lost it during the years. So bring that hobby back and encourage your students also to have hobbies. I think it's very 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 important. I can tell you from my experience. I used to do a lot of recruiting. Across the world, when I was at McKinsey, I would go to IIM Ahmedabad and ISB and other places to uh, to hire. Uh, and uh, uh, the first thing we would ask people is, tell us about yourself. And it was not about their studies that we wanted to listen about. We used to ask a very simple question to ourselves before we hired this person, this individual, the candidate. Do you think... This, this was a standard question, huh? Four people after the interview would come together, Vivek. They would, the question we would ask is, if you were left alone with this person for six hours in an airport, would you like to have him or her as your colleague? That was the finest, final litmus test for right. hiring uh, at McKinsey. And that sounds very 
uh, stupid and you would say this doesn't sound right, but that's the way it is because when you go and meet your clients and Vivek will also tell about his experiences at IES, how much can you talk about work? Probably 10 minutes, five minutes after that, your relationships are built around your interests. If today Vivek and I are dear friends, it's because we share a lot of common interests. We can talk about a lot of things together, not just about work. So I think that's what I'd like to uh, sort of uh, encourage all of you about hobbies. And, uh, and I think the last thing that I'd like to talk about, which you know I was sharing with Nina Ma'am and she said that there were some videos she'd also shared with all of you, is the fact that all of you as teachers are Corona warriors. Not just Corona warriors, you're nation builders. The young people, the young minds of a nation make the nation. As we will show in the video, the examples after examples after examples of how young people have changed the world. We'll talk about Alexander, we'll talk about, let's say, uh, Malala, so many of them. And you are the ones who've encouraged them. You're the ones who've made them what they are. So you are nation builders. You are teachers who are tremendously influencing the world. That's also my passion. So one of the reasons why I spend so much time teaching is because I believe that if I can change even one life, who knows that one life could be, uh, you know, the Malala of the world or, uh, or uh, you know, whoever is, who could change the world in a positive way, small way, big way. Uh, and I think that's also the passion of Shulani Vivek. We work very, very hard on our students with a very clear belief that you don't have to be a 99.9% person, person to, to change the world or to do something significant that's positive. It's actually the 80 percenters or the 70 percenters who always create the magic. Uh, we've seen the movie Three Idiots. It was always the six pointers or the five point some ones who really changed the world. I scored Vivek. I never again told you the story, but I scored 6.2 CGPA in IIT. In IIT terminology, I was the dhakkan of my class. I was the last guy in the CGPA. But probably if I look at the spectrum of students that I know, I've been uh, one of the best in terms of how successful or how happy I've been. So with that, let me show you this video, if you allow me, and then we'll go into the discussion. So also, please ask questions that you have. Throughout history, the young have always been the ones shape the future. Country's biggest asset. A best bet to conquer the future. So what are you waiting for? Your time to dream is now. Dream of the research that can change the world. Dream of a high-flying corporate career. Dream of higher studies in the world's best universities. Dream of developing cutting-edge technology of the future. Dream of your own global startup. University. We empower you and enable you to chase your dreams and change the world. Shuri University. Think learning. Think success. Thank you, Vivek. We should open it up for Q&A unless you have uh, 
Any last thoughts? Yes, we have uh, time for Q&A now. Uh, we don't have any questions yet, so I'm just going to request uh, teachers and Nina ma'am to just type out questions on the Q&A or chat box. And last thoughts are that uh, it is actually a wonderful opportunity in this uh, time when we are still not uh, back to school or back to work to make those changes in our lives or those additions to our uh, skills which we haven't been able to till today and read that book which you could not and read that uh, whatever watch that movie which you could not so make that positive change in your life at this time which will make you come back with renewed energy and vigor and a better version of yourself we don't want to be worse versions of ourselves when we go back because we are so scared and so worried and so you know depressed or whatever let's not do that let's go back with happiness um, yeah. So I think till the questions come in, I've got a few Vivek. I've been thinking, sure. Sure. Uh, you know, when I when I put myself into the shoes of a teacher nowadays, I mean it's it's a tough job. Uh, you know, you're teaching pretty much eight nine hours. You're on the computer. It's actually tiring uh, being in front of the computer. Uh, you're a mother. You're possibly or a father. You're you're a daughter. You're a son, uh, a husband or a wife. I mean, you have to take care of the family and then you have to take care of the home, especially many of them are ladies, right? Cooking every day. How do you manage this? How do you, how do you, how should they juggle all this together? How should they reduce the stress that they have? I'm sure there's a lot of stress around. Yeah, there's so much stress on teachers because they have to multitask. They have to do various things. They have to not only look after families, but after work. And especially at such times when the Housework is more probably and classes are on and family is there and so many things. I can understand this pressure, uh, but not appreciate it because you are the ones in the middle of it. I think you have to prioritize your time uh, management and see what things are more important and give them more time and quality time. So also spend a lot of time with your children and uh, talk to them a little more about life and maybe tell them stories, uh, inspiring stories, revise them and uh, also spend time meditating, meditation and reading uh, those things which you can. But I think it's, uh, that will give you the creative energy to fight the battles that you're fighting. So the recharge time is very important. So I'm gonna pick up uh, two questions. One is Ashima ma'am, she's asking, uh, you know, how do we teach online nowadays? And I think on Q&A, we have a similar question by, uh, that's Ashima ma'am again. Yes. How do we teach more effectively? And if you allow me, Vivek, ahead, I'm going to pick this up. So, uh, Ashima ma'am and everyone else, this is actually a very complex topic. Uh, the way of teaching on the internet is actually very, very different from the way you would teach uh, in the real world. Having said this, I also believe, Vivek, that uh, the future model is going to be a hybrid model where online will increasingly play a role. It's already happening. You might have seen the Baijus and the unacademics coming into play. So at some level, they are competition to you teachers, right? Uh, Baijus exist because uh, somewhere parents and the students believe that they want more out of their, out of their learning. So what can you do? Uh, so first is uh, I'll volunteer a one hour webinar or a session. Nina, I'm happy to do that. I speak about it all the time. So can do that. But three first small tips. The first is you need to be as serious in your online lecture as you are in front of the classroom. So I just came back from talking to my faculty just before this week and I was telling them that number one, try to do this with the same rigor. And what does the rigor mean? You should be some basic hygiene factors. You should have a quality Wi-Fi. A laptop is way superior than using a mobile phone. So use a laptop. Make sure you've got a proper background that you have. Make sure you've got proper uh, clothes that you're wearing. You've got the right smile. So you're engaging with your uh, with the audience the way you normally would in a classroom. And I don't know how it is in schools, which might be better, but I can tell you in universities many times, uh, for uh, university senior professors, these things don't come very naturally. So I could see lots of people Vivek with you know unshaven faces and uncombed hair, which you wouldn't do in a classroom. And that was a fundamental question I was asking them that you know guys, you need to step up. Uh, I think this, the second thing you need to also do is also, and that's a broader question for the school uh, Vivek, 
and you should pick it up separately with Nina ma'am is the way to teach online is different from the way you teach offline. And let me give an analogy over here. I don't know how many of you are fond of theater or movies, but way back uh, in, the, in the times of uh, uh, Dada, Pal Dada Palke, right? When the first uh, movie was made, do you know how they made music, how movies were shown? There would uh, be a movie played and along with that, like orchestra Vivek, they would have musicians, live musicians playing music. So we are in that stage right now of online learning, where we're trying to do what we do in the physical world and we're trying to take it digital, if you think about it. But that's fine for the time being, but as we take it forward, you'll have to bring in uh, smaller uh, classes or the right size of an online class is 20 minutes, not one hour or 40 minutes, which you normally have. So you have to rethink your pedagogy using tools like whiteboarding or doodling and stuff, which you can all learn, by the way. So upskill yourself on how to become great online teachers. I think another thing, Nina, ma'am, that might happen, that's my uh, hypothesis is that you will move to a world like a Gurukul. Like if you think about a Gurukul, uh, let's think about the Mahabharata. We only remember uh, Dronacharya. We don't remember the 500 other teachers that probably supported Dronacharya. The same thing will happen in online. There'll be 10 stars because you're now actors, right? Your parents are also watching you. Who knows the neighbors are watching you. You might be recorded. So you have to ask, ask yourselves as teachers, do you want to be the Dronacharyas or do you want to be the 500 others who no one remembers? And everyone will not be the Dronacharya, I can tell you, right? And that's what's gonna happen with technology. It happened in medicine, by the way, where there was one Dr. Trehan who became very famous because he could now bring that technology into heart transplants and others were just helping him out. So uh, there's a lot of science behind online, uh, and I can't cover that in you know three minutes, but I would say get your basics in place and the basics don't change. The basics are you need to smile, you need to bring inspiration to the class and you need to dress well, you need to look good. Uh, then there are some technicalities about how to run the class and I think those you can upskill yourself. I'll request Nina ma'am to, to encourage the teachers to uh, go through some webinars. We can help you at Shulani. We're doing a lot of work on that. We have a learning center that helps schools. And uh, I think finally, I'll say that uh, have fun doing this. You know, you'll have to transform yourselves. Uh, this is not going anywhere. You know, you'll have to learn how to do online. Uh, whatever people tell you, it will be hybrid. So it'll be a combination, but online is there to stay. So uh, I think a bunch of other questions, Vivek, that you're going to pick yeah, up. And, most uh, of the questions are about online teaching and you've answered them very well. Uh, Anjali ma'am is asking. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think before that, I'll, uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to, because you're also on the board of uh, the school, Vivek. So uh, finding the right technology platform will also be very, very important. So right now we have patchy solutions. If someone is using Zoom or someone is using uh, Microsoft, but having a, comprehensive technology platform that is integrated uh, with assessments, with, with the video lecture that's happening and also with attendance systems sector becomes very, very critical. So I'll give a small example. We just finished our midterm exams online and we have tools where we can do online proctoring. Proctoring means the students can't teach. So it uses AI where you use face recognition for the student to get inside the class and then he or she can't look left or right because then the system picks it up. Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of good stuff you can do with technology. Uh, so I would encourage the school to start uh, experimenting or start talking to players with technology. Again, we have our own products. We can help you, Nina, ma'am, at some point of time, whenever you're ready. But but be prepared for technology, I'd like to say. Yeah, like just, to, just to say that uh, what Adul says is right, uh, you have to be prepared for technology. Don't be scared of it. Make friends with it. And the fact that somebody may be recording or somebody may be now, this webinar is an open webinar going on to YouTube. Somebody sitting in California or in Chennai may be watching it or may watch it later. It's all recorded. So even if uh, we are just being ourselves and just trying to be, uh, you know, uh, attentive, uh, trying to speak uh, like as a speaker, trying to make it interesting, trying to engage with others, it is uh, okay to be recorded. 
and uh, i for example spend about uh, many hours every week uh, getting recorded in various things atul spends many hours speaking on uh, videos or other things so the thing is that we are uh, that that uh, that fear of uh, being watched should be not there in your minds anymore and that it doesn't matter it's a very open world anyway people keep posting on facebook etc so it's the same thing you are subject to scrutiny and it's okay everyone is the same in that so sense. i have a small tip for every teacher vivek which i am practicing nowadays and it's very difficult are you ready for it vivek no i am ready for it i don't know so <laughs> switch on your uh, mobile after this and speak about yourself for 2 minutes and then share that video if you have the courage in your whatsapp group first time it will be not that good do that 3 for 5 times and you learn how to speak into the camera it's not that difficult yeah, yeah. so so but that getting that 2 minute ride i just did that something shikha wanted uh, me to speak about something shikha it took me 20 takes for that which you said was quite good i'm still not very happy with it uh, but but practice it you know and the more you practice and the more you share it then i mean i had so much fear giving that 2 minute video to shikha you know i was sweating Uh, because doing that two minute video is very tough doing a half an hour webinar is actually very easy it's just like the tedx talk vivek that you speak all the time talking for 10 minutes is so tough <laughs> no actually actually just to complete the answers to these questions one particular question is about uh, interactive kids those who don't respond and those who are more interactive so i think you need to give some incentives in that class in the sense that uh, maybe a quiz maybe some points maybe some recognition that okay so and so student answered very well today you know even that encouragement instead of being uh, discouraging of those who are not you make examples of those who are uh, better uh, at responding and maybe some point system which will accumulate and come back uh, to give an award or a certificate when the school opens that this was a very attentive child in the online classes or this this was the child who responded the best or this was the child who did very well in physics Uh, or answered questions in the physics quiz, something like that. There's One of the things we do, Vivek, uh, we've got a tool very similar to Corn Banega Kurodpati Fast yeah. Finger First type of a thing. So after ten minutes of the lecture, this question comes up, and uh, students are expected to answer that, and it goes into the grading system. So you also have an internal marking system. It goes into that, yeah. and you see the question, you see the answers live. and it's anonymous so there's no threat to anyone you know everyone answers you can also bring in fun you know you can ask fun questions in that you can show videos you can show so typically students and human beings love videos they love pictures and yeah. there's so much stuff available we're engaging that way right right right, right. and then uh, just to answer one question before the last one and that is pooja ma'am your question has been pretty much answered by all these online uh, tips that atul has given and uh, just to make it stress free basically connect well keep uh, stay cheerful tell stories uh, make them respond and treat it as if you are in a class so like uh, atul said that dress up uh, for a class and then treat your it as a class just like you do a video call with your sister in california or somewhere same thing just be live and engaging and uh, atul the last one i am going to take up and then you can uh, probably ask your thoughts on the diverse learning needs uh, well there are different kinds of human beings in your class uh, students from different backgrounds different learning abilities different creativity skills some are good at math some are good at english uh, other things so you obviously have to understand each child as far as possible it has to be a one to one understanding of the child it is difficult because you have lots of work you cannot take out time to be that much attentive to the child but you have to somehow Uh, give uh, at least that time to those children who have learning uh, difficulties or learning needs which are different from others atul absolutely vivek and i think online becomes a great tool for that for two ways for example when you run online assessments neena ma'am uh, your ai tools can actually help and let's take an example you're teaching mathematics right and there are 10 different chapters of mathematics uh, in a normal class uh when you're taking exams you don't know who's good and at what you you know as teachers because you're spending a lot of time with uh students but using technology you can exactly know who's weak where uh and this technology is already available so you can create individual learning paths for students which are completely distinctive uh 
so that of course is use of technology uh, but i think uh, am i audible vivek have i yeah yeah, yeah. i think nina ma must to say something sometimes it just uh, breaks off i think the second thing on on diversity is uh, this whole uh, uh, using technology you can put bring the best uh, teachers in front of i don't know am i there vivek i don't know yeah hey, yeah you are there at all you are very much there oh sorry so using technology you know it's a glass half full half empty nina ma'am uh, the way i look at it is i can suddenly using technology bring the best of people in front of my students and inspire them let's take an example uh of doing a webinar like this right if if me and vivek had to come live to your school it would have you know been very difficult we would have said acha we will come all the way i would have had to come all the way from solan and you would have had to come from panchkula but today we can just connect uh, it's so amazing you can bring in uh so many different people uh in front of your in front of a student inspire them and ultimately you know they can get better and superior learning so so i think i would really encourage all of you to bring in a lot of experimentation and and a lot of uh, inspiration into your classroom using technology i mean nothing stops you as a teacher to bring a friend of yours who's teaching in another school and say okay you know why don't you pick up this chapter better because you know it better than we do so can you speak to my students so you can bring in variety also into your class with this yes i think no more questions we can 430 already sorry my my computer is giving me uh, trouble uh, well, i think it's 4:30 already so we can go i'm to go but uh, meena ma'am over to you uh, such a wonderful audience you've had yes yeah i would like to thank both the speakers today on behalf of the teachers of gurukul global school definitely we are going to introduce creativity into our curriculum and i really appreciate that 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 particular point where we it was said that uh, the monotony has to be broken when we are taking up the lectures we must understand that we have different type of students with us we have visual learners we have verbal learners we have those who are having logical and mathematical mind social learners so when we break the monotony at times it happens like sir suggested you take them outside for the naturalists it's really good when they go outside and they learn things they enjoy that time and breaks definitely they enhance the learning capacity of a child that monotony is broken i i personally feel that when we have very long lectures at times it happens we stop listening so today's session was again good because there were breaks in between we had those videos we had those short movies and i think our teachers are also doing that in their online lectures i've been observing time to time they are introducing short videos and maybe ppts just to break the monotony so thank you so much thanks once again and i'm sure we are going to continue with these kind of webinars nina okay. ma'am uh, before we close for the day i'd love to welcome all of you and your students and your teachers to shulini once uh, the, the yeah. environment opens yeah. up and uh, Uh, i'm going to pile on onto vivek and visit your school next time i'm in chandigarh i know i've not got family in chandigarh beyond you must you must <laughs> in fact uh, uh, just to say a last thing uh, screen time is a question asked by vijeta ma'am yes teach online is uh, screen time but uh, you must tell the parents to tell the students to spend even less time on their mobiles nowadays because even the online classes add to the screen time so they have to be disciplined there's no other way and uh, they should take this screen time is slightly different from mobile time i mean that time when they are on the social yes. media this is important screen time so this is important screen important time. screen time and unimportant screen time have to be differentiated yeah. that's a new it terminology is. today thank you <laughs> it has become a necessity today yeah thank you <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you be safe and have a great day and let's all pray that corona goes away very soon thank you everyone